Tom and Huck. In 1995, Disney released Tom and Huck, their take on the Mark Twain classic, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The film follows Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn as they set out on a mischievous adventure seeking justice and truth. They each gave strong performances in Tom and Huck and it seemed like they were both on their way toward long movie careers. However, for reasons tragic and otherwise, this didn't happen. Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Tom Sawyer The then 13 year old was in the midst of his long running role as Randy Taylor in Home Improvement. He had just come off voicing young Simba in The Lion King and was already a big star and one of the biggest teen heartthrobs of the 90s when he played Tom Sawyer in Tom and Huck. But it doesn't seem like the young actor enjoyed his fame. In interviews he openly discussed how much he disliked the fame and how neurotic the industry was. It came as no surprise that after starring in Tom and Huck he went on to star in only a handful more movies before leaving acting behind and concentrating on his academic pursuits. Jonathan didn't just go to any old college and enrolled into Harvard University where he studied philosophy and history. He also spent a semester in prestigious St Andrews University in Scotland before finally graduating from Columbia University. In the 2000s he appeared as a guest star on hit TV shows like Smallville, Eight Simple Rules and Veronica Mars but has managed to keep a low profile and lives a very private life. Brad Renfro as Huckleberry Huck Finn Brad Renfro played Huck Finn in Tom and Huck after Elijah Wood had to pass on the opportunity. It was the third movie role for the then 12 year old who won a Young Star Award for his acclaimed work in The Client and The Cure. Filmmaker Peter Horton who directed Brad Renfro in 1995's The Cure said in an interview, Brad had a really rough background, he is 11 going on 24 and didn't seem to have the childhood side of him. Allegedly, he first smoked pot at the age of nine and first got drunk at 11. Combine that with his success in Hollywood and that sounds like a recipe for a disaster. His first run-in with the law was in 1998 when he was taken to a juvenile service centre on suspicion of cocaine and marijuana possession. His next run-in with the law was in 2000. An 18-year-old Renfro and a friend were arrested for attempting to steal a 45-foot yacht in Fort Lauderdale, where Renfro was filming Movie Bully. Multiple other arrests followed over the next few years, with charges ranging from underage drinking to attempt of buying heroin from undercover detectives. This undercover stint was photographed and the actor ended up front page news. Despite his troubles with the law, he seemed to be headed in the right direction career-wise. He starred in five 2001 movies, including Bully and Ghost World, with Scarlett Johansson, three 2002 films, and five more in 0405. But drug and alcohol addiction derailed his path to stardom, and a heroin overdose took his life in 2008. He was only 25 at the time of his death. The irony is that Brad had just finished an outpatient program and seemed to be heading in a good direction. Brad left behind a legacy. The actor fathered a son, Yamoto, with a Japanese woman. The boy, who is now 17, returned with his mother to Japan after his father's funeral. Rachel Lee Cook as Becky Thatcher Rachel started auditioning at the age of 14 and landed her first ever movie role in Babysitter's Club in 1995, after which she landed her second role on Tom and Huck. After she finished filming Tom and Huck, she continued appearing in many diverse film roles big or small, but to this day her most famous film remains She's All That, which became a cult hit with teenagers in 1999. She met her future husband Daniel Gillies, star of The Vampire Diaries and The Originals, in 2001, and the pair got married three years later. They added daughter Charlotte Easton and son Theodore Vigo Sullivan to their little family. Unfortunately, the couple announced their split in 2019 and their divorce was finalised this year. She became an anti-drug ambassador in 1997 and took part in an ad, This Is Your Brain On Drugs, where she proceeds to destroy her kitchen and some eggs with a frying pan. To mark the 20 year anniversary of the ad, Rachel reshot the ad and it was released on the 20 year anniversary. The ad criticises the war on drugs and its problematic contribution 
to mass incarceration, racism and poverty in families. Both versions can be found on YouTube and despite the 20 year gap, Rachel looks amazing in both. Rachel surprised fans with the announcement that she will appear in the remake of She's All That, being gender swapped. He's All That focuses on a male protagonist with a similar plotline to the 1999 movie. Instead of playing the main character, she's portraying famous TikTokers Addison Rae's on-screen mother. The movie came out last year and was heavily criticised for how many product placements they had and poor acting from few of the other actors. Eric Schweig as Injun Joe. Schweig was born in Inuvik, Canada. He is the oldest of seven children who were all adopted out as part of the Canadian government's failed attempt at forcing Inuit and First Nations children to assimilate into white society. He was six months old when he was adopted by the Schweig family and never met his biological mother, who died of alcoholism in 1989. The actor had this to say. She didn't drink a drop of alcohol until we were taken away, says Schweig. We were part of the whole assimilation programme forcibly taken away, although my adoptive parents told me I wasn't. Before playing in Jinjo, he was already known for playing Uncas in The Last Mohicans, and has not stopped acting since then, having around 30 movie credits under his belt. But it hasn't been an easy road for the actor. He has stated that Big Eden, released in 2000, was the first film in which he was entirely sober. My drinking almost killed me. The only way to honour my mother for putting me here is to stop, Schweig said. He travels around Canada and the United States and shares his life experience in speaking engagements where he covers topics of Aboriginal issues, adoption, foster care and addictions. As part of his healing journey and to reconnect with his Inuit heritage and Inuit art, he carves traditional Inuit spirit masks which he then sells. In 2017 he adopted two foster siblings. When asked about it he said, I went from 30 years of bachelorhood to Mr. Mom overnight. Everything changed. I went from only having to consider myself for every decision to cantering everything on my foster kids. It was a real 180. He continues acting and his latest work include 2020 Barskins and Brother I Cry, which is about a young First Nations man struggling with drug addiction. Cortland Mead as Cousin Sid. Unlike in the book where Sid is Tom's half-brother, in this adaptation of the book, they changed it to being Tom's cousin. The role was a walk in the park for little eight-year-old, who started his career at the age of two and had movies like Dragon World and Little Rascals under his belt already. After Tom and Huck, Cortland found regular work in film and television, especially in horror genres starring in The Shining and Hellraiser Bloodline, as well as doing more voice acting work for film and television. He quietly moved away from acting in 2004 and never addressed his retirement publicly. However, he did star in 2020, Never Hike in the Snow, but hasn't commented on the possibility of returning to acting or whether or not it was a one-time thing. He has no social media accounts, so not a lot is known about his personal life, apart from the fact he has a daughter Scarlett with his long-term girlfriend Chelsea. Charles Rocket as Judge Thatcher Before being cast as Judge Thatcher, Rocket was already a comedy star and was well known from having appeared on Saturday Night Live and for his role in Hocus Pocus and Dumb and Dumber. Sadly for the actor, his career on Saturday Night Live was cut short when he used the F word on a live show and due to public complaints, was fired the next week. But he didn't seem to have let that affect him as he went on to star in over 30 television series including X-Files and Law and & Order. Unfortunately, on October 7th, 2005, the actor was found in a field near his home with his throat slit a knife next to him. Medical examiner ruled his death as suicide and police determined that there was no criminal aspect to this case. He left his wife Beth of 33 years behind and son Zane. Marion Seldes as Widow Douglas. She has been married twice. Her first husband was actor Julian Clamon, who she was married to for eight years and had a daughter with. She left the marriage after her father noticed marks on her face and had spoken how abusive and violent that marriage had been. Sadly, she passed away in 2014 at the age of 86. Her name has appeared in headlines a few years after her death because of a 2017 documentary made by R.E. Rogers, Marion. Rogers is accused of exploiting the actress in her last years of life when she was the most vulnerable as she suffered from dementia. At some points in the documentary, the actress seems to be of sound mind and aware of her illness, saying, 
I always believe the future will be as beautiful as the past, which you know I love, but I cannot say that to you honestly anymore. I'm afraid of the future. A story shared by her daughter Catherine Clamon shows us how strong-willed the actress was. After a fall where she broke her shoulder, she didn't cancel on her plans on meeting Angela Lansbury. Marion sat through the whole show with a broken shoulder to show her support for a friend. Thank you all for listening. Take it easy. <laughs>